for the second week in a row, Rip Engel's perennial rough and ready Nittany Lions of Penn State take on a Western Collegiate powerhouse. This week it's the UCLA Bruins testing the Staters before some 35,000 at University Park, Pennsylvania. Pete Lisk, number 24, is the Penn State quarterback, and he's a good one. Coach Engel has a potential point producer in Ronnie Coates, who can place kick them from 40 yards away. The UCLA Bruins feature an air offense, and the chief receiver is Mel Prophet, a 6'5", 218-pound end. The first quarter is a standoff, but in the second period, Penn State mounts an offense with Gary Klingensmith, grinding out a six-yard game. The Nittany Lions are sticking to the ground, and that's Tommy Urbanic picking up a first down. The Bruins can't contain the Lions on this drive. Gary Klingensmith carries in for the score, and Penn State holds sway 7-0. UCLA, upset by Pitt the previous week, finally cracks the Penn State defense. Larry Zeno leads the U-Clans with a 12-yard romp around right end. The Bruins' best weapon is an air assault, and Zeno zeroes in on Kurt Altenberg, who's brought down on the state 30-yard line. Larry Zeno keeps that football flying, and once again, he's on target. Mitch Johnson wraps up this aerial for 14 yards. Zeno is riddling the state secondary with his passes. Larry lays the Lions low on this toss. It's a touchdown to Mel Prophet, and the underdog U-Clans tie it up at 7-all. Time is running out in the half when the Nittany Lions display their air might. Pete Lisk hits Gary Klingensmith for a 13-yard gain for State. Less than one minute remains, but it's more than enough time for Penn State to spring this sweetheart of a play. Pete Lisk hits Junior Powell on the far sideline, and Powell takes over from there. Junior baffles the Bruins as he threads his way to a gorgeous 52-yard touchdown. State adds the extra point to lead at intermission 14 to 7. UCLA gets rich with profit in the third quarter. Mel Profit gathers in Larry Zeno's toss, and the Bruins are good for 21. Zeno double crosses the state defense, which is looking for a pass. Larry keeps and lopes for a first down. Larry Zeno is putting on quite an offensive show. Larry keeps once again and legs it around right into the state five. Zeno has the Lions daffy with his play calling. Larry goes all the way with a pitch for points to Bob Robinson. The U-Clans are holding their own as they tie the game once again at 14-14. In the final period, Rip Bengals Lions come roaring back. On a draw play, Eddie Stockrath rips off a 14-yard gainer. State trots out its ground troops, and this is Tommy Urbanic chipping in with a first down. UCLA Titans and the Staters have to go for a three-pointer. Ronnie Coates comes through with a 32-yard field goal. Penn State breaks the stalemate and leads 17-14. The Bruins have their backs to the wall late in the game, but they're not out of it yet. Sophomore Jim Coletto rambles for 29 yards. Time is all important, and the fastest way goalward is through the air. Larry Zeno teams with Mel Prophet, and the Bruins are 26 yards closer. The red-hot hand of Zeno is cooled off by the Lions. Larry's toss winds up in the eager paws of Penn State's Don Calm. This key interception snuffs out the Bruins' last chance. Penn State overcomes stubborn UCLA 17-14. Once again, it looks as if Rip Engel has one of the top teams in the East and a contender for national honors in this year's Nittany Lion 11. Penn State, a potent force in Eastern football, makes a strong bid for national recognition in a big intersectional struggle with Rice, a prime contender for the Southwestern Conference crown. 
It's homecoming day at State's Beaver Stadium, where Coach Rip Engel's Nittany Lions are seeking their third straight win. In 13 seasons, Engel has never had a losing record. Pete Lisk has completed 30 of 39 passes in State's victories over Oregon and UCLA. Don Kahn is the Z-back in Penn State's snappy attack. Kahn is also a defensive standout. Pint size halfback Junior Powell is well on his way to becoming the leading pass receiver in Penn State history. Jess Neely, in his 24th year as head coach, brings his Rice Owls to Penn State, fresh from a big win over LSU. Junior fullback Paul Piper, a 200-pounder, is the power runner in the Owls' offense. Walter McReynolds, a sharp shooting passer, pilots the Rice Air Arm. Like most Southwestern teams, the Owls love to throw that football. A fumbled punt gives Penn State an early opportunity. From the 17, Tom Urbanek bangs into the end zone to give the Easterners the edge at 7-0. The Rice Owls begin to hoot when Walt McReynolds cranks up his throwing arm and connects with George Parry on the Penn State 30. Reynolds, a real eagle eyes, zeroes in on John Sylvester, and the Owls are perching on the Penn State 12 at the close of the first quarter. Rice is shoved back to the 16, and on fourth down, McReynolds unloads a long bomb. George Parry beats his man, but he can't hold the pass, and the ball goes over to Penn State. A rough and ready lion line provides fine protection for Pete Lisk, who whips a completion to Don Calm. Tom carries to the State 41, where he recovers his own fumble. On a pitch out, Junior Powell packs the pig pelt to the outside, turns the corner, and cranks out a snappy 26 yards. A rugged Rice defense stops State, and Ron Coates is called upon for a field goal attempt. Coates kicks off target, and the Owls take over. Paul Piper ports the pigskin on a pad-popping pickup of 17 yards. Ben Hollingsworth calls a down-and-out pattern, which goes for a 14-yard advance, with Dale Callahan grabbing the ball at the Penn State 27. Hollingsworth has a hot hand. He hits George Parry, and it's goal to go for the Owls. Paul Piper plunges into the payoff patch as Rice rallies to tie Penn State 7-7 at the end of the first half. Penn State opens up in the third period with Ed Stuckrath racing through Rice for 16 quick yards. The Nittany Lions roar loud and long as Lisk lays it on the line to Bill Bowes on the Owls 31. On a perfect play pass, Pete Lisk whistles the ball to Dick Anderson for a first down on the Rice score. Gary Klingensmith battles his way into the end zone with a tie-breaking TD as State assumes command 14-7. In the fourth quarter, Rice receives a rude jolt when a Walt McReynolds fumble is recovered by State's Bill Bowes on the Owls' two-yard line. Ed Stuckrath storms into the end zone as Penn State streaks away to a 20-7 advantage over Rice. Late in the game, Rice is forced to punt. Gene Fleming spirals a long one to Junior Powell. Junior reels off a rapid-fire return that comes to a screeching halt when Powell drops the ball, but recovers it on the Owls' 28. Sophomore speedster Don Kunit hot foots it around the right flank and makes his way to the Rice four-yard line. Kunit carries again, this time to the left, and over he goes. Penn State with a powerful second-half surge hands Rice its first setback of the season, 28-7, while the Nittany Lions roar on undefeated. In Eastern football's major gridiron attraction, Penn State renews its rivalry with Syracuse in the Orange Men's Archbold Stadium. This is the 41st meeting between Penn State and Syracuse, with State leading in the series. Wally Maley, the Syracuse signal caller, is one of the nation's top rushers. 
Both State and Syracuse bring identical three and one records into this game and both are eyeing the Lambert Trophy. A sellout crowd of nearly 40,000 is here to see if Penn State can rebound from last week's upset by Army. Syracuse is coming off a smashing win over UCLA. It's a scoreless defensive battle as Frank Hershey punts for Penn State in the second quarter. Matt Duckett takes the ball on the run and eludes three Lion defenders. Duckett delights the crowd by exploding for 23 yards before he's dumped by Ralph Baker and Hershey. It's definitely a contest between the powerful Syracuse ground game and State's vaunted aerial attack. Billy Hunter is sprung loose late in the second quarter for the Orange men. Billy breezes past Joe Vargo, the last Lion defender, on his way to a 53-yard touchdown. It's 80 degrees on the playing field, and Billy is all in after his TD trip. Syracuse strikes first to lead, six to nothing. Pete Lisk is the man Syracuse must contain. Pete pitches on target to his Z-back, Don Calm. Don calmly collects 34 big yards before he's dropped on the Syracuse 24. It's State's deepest penetration of the game. Lisk has his offense in high gear as we roll the slow motion camera. This play develops into a 15 yard plus. Bob Riggle winds up with the ball on the Syracuse five where it's goal to go for Penn State. After one incomplete pass, Lisk tries again, but Don Cobb drops the ball in the end zone. Now it's fourth down as Pete Lisk attempts another. Don Cobb can't hang on, and this Penn State threat goes up in smoke. The first half ends with Syracuse maintaining its six-point edge. Syracuse is well satisfied with his ground attack, and the Orange men grind out more yardage in the third quarter. Mike Kosky breaks loose, and it looks as if he may go all the way. Joe Vargo makes the stop after a big 58-yard dash into Penn State territory. In slow motion, we see one of the Orange men's favorite pass patterns. Maley looks like an Indian giver as he takes the ball back from Mike Kosky and rolls left. His pass to sophomore George Fair looks fine, but Fair is out of the end zone, forcing Syracuse to go for a field goal. John Paglio is in good position and he boots the ball through the uprights. His 24-yard effort gives Syracuse a 9-0 advantage in the third quarter. As the period comes to a close, Lisk finally gets his team moving. He laterals to Junior Powell for 16 yards. Lisk, who holds Penn State's one-season records for total offense, yards gained passing, and touchdown passes, shows he can run, too. His 34-yard dash puts the Nittany men near midfield. But a rough, tough Syracuse defense squelches another Penn State threat when George Fair barrels into Junior Powell on fourth down play. Syracuse takes over. State holds Syracuse for three downs, forcing the Orange to punt. John Snyder sends the ball spiraling to Joe Vargo, who takes it on the 20. Joe avoids a traffic jam and brings the ball to midfield. Lisk unloads a long pass that has touchdown written all over it. But Dick Anderson can't hold on to the ball. Syracuse wins 9-0 and becomes the first team to shut out Penn State since 1954 as the Orange men look for national honors. The fourth-ranked Panthers of Pittsburgh take on arch-rival Penn State before more than 52,000 fans at Pitt Stadium. The Panthers have lost only one of nine games this season, and a win today would give them their finest record since Pitt's gridiron glory days of 1937. 
America halfback Paul Martha, number 10, is the bread and butter man in the Panther attack. This 180 pound senior can hurt you either running, passing, or receiving. Fred Missouri, number 16, quarterbacks a powerful pit offense. Only a junior, Missouri is a scrambler who loves to run with that football. On the second play of the game, Penn State shows Pittsburgh it is not to be taken lightly. Don Com takes a screen pass from Pete Lisk, and behind terrific blocking, Com races down the sideline. Don is nearly dropped on the pit 32, but the 172-pound senior spins free and heads for the other side of the field. Rick Leeson finally brings Com down after a sensational 68-yard play. The Nittany Lions draw first blood as Gary Klingensmith gallops over from the nine and Penn State takes a fast 7-0 lead over Pitt. The Panthers roar back late in the first quarter. Fred Missouri hits Bill Howley for a first down on the State 20. The Missouri to Howley combination clicks again as Howley makes a leaping grab for 16 yards as the period ends. Two plays into the second quarter, Paul Martha crashes over for the touchdown, the extra point is missed, and Penn State continues on top, 7-6. To Later, Pitt has possession, but Fred Missouri fumbles, and Ed Stewart recovers for Penn State on the Pitt, 35. Lions set out to capitalize on the break. Gary Klingensmith sweeps the left side for 14 yards. The slow motion camera affords a longer look at the state attack. Pete Lisk rolls out to the right looking for a receiver. Pete pinpoints Gerald Sandusky in the end zone for the score. Penn State holds a surprising 14 to six lead over the favored Pitt Panthers. Following the kickoff, Pittsburgh lashes back. Fred Missouri scrambles around on the backfield before getting off a pass, which finds its mark. Rick Leeson latches on for a big 34-yard gain. This time, Missouri decides to run with the ball. Weaving in and out through state defenders, Fred gets to the Lion 22. Missouri is giving the state defense a mighty tough time. Fred gets to the 10 before the Lions can catch him. Rick Leeson gets the call and the Panther fullback bulldozes to the one yard line. From close range, rugged Rick Leeson dives in for the score. Pitt fails to convert and Penn State holds a 14 to 12 advantage at halftime. In the third quarter, Fred Missouri is up to his old tricks. Fred tucks the ball under his arm and is off on a rousing rush that terminates at State's 34. A large crowd comes to its feet as Missouri has helped off the field and Pitt's hopes are dealt a cruel blow. From the state 17, Rick Leeson kicks a 27-yard field goal, and Pitt takes the lead for the first time, 15 to 14. Rip Engel's Lions fight back as Pete Liss flips a pass into the flat that Gary Klingensmith grabs for 17 yards. The state forward wall opens a big hole and Christian Weber breaks loose. Weber gets 30 yards before Eric Crabtree nails him on the Panther 23. The high-speed camera slows the action and sees Pete Liss giving an outstanding performance. State senior quarterback waits for a receiver to clear and fires. Don Com makes a circus catch in the end zone and Penn State regains the lead 21 to 15.
Sophomore Kenny Lucas is at the pit controls late in the third period. Lucas hits Eric Crabtree for 25 yards as the Panthers drive. Fred Mazurik returns to action as the final period opens. Fred finds Bill Bodel open and hits him for a first down on the state 29. Playing the greatest game of his career, Mazurik rolls out to pass but can't find a receiver. Fred brings Panther fans up and roaring on this 17-yard run to the end zone and the Panthers have tied it up. Rick Leeson's conversion is perfect, putting Pittsburgh ahead to stay. The Panthers stave off a final drive to edge Penn State 22 to 21. Higher ranked and probably better than most bowl teams, Pittsburgh is the victim of a grave oversight for having been snubbed by the major postseason selection committees. <laughs>